Customer Returns in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 is integrated in the Sales and Marketing and the Inventory modules. This presentation describes the settings and parameters that you should use to configure the Customer Returns module. The Customer Returns module is controlled by the Return Orders Configuration key, which is included in the Trade and Logistics license. Arguably, the most important setting in the Customer Returns module is the set of disposition codes. Disposition codes are assigned to return lines upon receipt of the returned items. They determine how the returned items should be dealt with and whether the customer should be credited. Disposition codes are defined in the Setup section of the Sales and Marketing module. Each disposition code must designate one of the predefined disposition actions. In addition to the disposition action, you may specify that a charge should be added to the return line when the disposition code is assigned to the line. External codes should be used if you want to handle intercompany return orders between companies with separate sets of disposition code names. You may define as many disposition codes as you wish. This can be useful for generating statistics. I now want to define a separate disposition code for items that are scrapped because of non-compliance with product tolerance requirements. I name the disposition code scrap tol. I specify the disposition action scrap and enter a description. Out of tolerance. No charge should be added as this is a product defect. Notice that we have two disposition codes that basically do the same, but they can be separated for statistical purposes. Reason codes are specified on the return order header and expresses the customer's reason or cause for requesting the return. Reason codes may be organized into reason code groups for faster lookup performance. Similar to disposition codes, you may set up reason codes to automatically add a charge to the return order when a reason code is assigned to the order. External codes are used in intercompany scenarios. I will now add a reason code for customer changed his mind to the reason code group other. Find the other reason code group and navigate to the reason codes for that group. I create a new reason code and a description. And I want to charge a, a $30 flat fee in this case. Like that. The physical handling of returned items involve dedicated processes in the warehouse. In order to enable inspection and quarantine and for performing any scrap operations, a quarantine warehouse must be specified for each normal warehouse that can receive returned items. The Arrival Overview form is used to list and process expected arrivals, including returned items. In the Arrival Overview form, predefined filters or setups are used to filter the incoming arrivals by location or arrival type. The system comes with a predefined filter for return orders. Going to the Setup tab 
Additional restrictions can be added to the filter and it can be saved under a new name. If you want to restrict arrivals for a particular site and warehouse, we can do that and we can save this filter as returns warehouse 22. Notice that a setup must either show return orders or one or more of the other arrival types. It cannot show a combination of the arrival types in this list and return orders. Finally, let's look at a few general settings. In the accounts receivable parameters, the period of validity expresses the default no number of days a return order will be valid. You may also specify that a reason code must be entered when a return order is created. Finally, a number sequence can be set up to automatically assign IMA numbers to return orders. This concludes the walkthrough of the parameters and settings that are used to configure the customer returns module. Thank you for your attention.